afternoon. We are on day five of the Empower, Ignite, and Soar Summit. We are wrapping things up with a couple powerful interviews. Today, I have author, speaker, life coach, and mother, which I think for her, mother would go first, which I love, Miriam Laundry. Welcome, Miriam. Hi, Maria. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. You are welcome. You know, when I put this all together, I knew I needed you here to talk about the concept in your TEDx talk, which left me with chills. So tell us a little bit more about your family before we jump into the talk today. Okay, sure. I like how you said that. I think one of my biggest accomplishments first is being a mother. I have four children. I have a 14-year-old girl, a second teenager, just happened this week. She turned 13. Congratulations. Yes. <laughs> and then two boys that are 10 and 5. So life is is really busy with them, and I write children's books. I go into schools, do workshops, just trying to spread the positivity to our kids in schools and at home. And I'd like to add that you have been working um, alongside Jack Canfield for many years. And what kind? Tell us real quick, briefly, like what kind of work you've been doing at his, at his workshops. Sure. Okay. I've attended. I think most of his workshops, the first one is called Breakthrough to Success, to go and to work on yourself. It's a week-long course on just discovering everything about yourself, what you want to do with your life, what your strengths and your weaknesses are, and find purpose in your life. So I did that. I've done that several times. And then I went on to do a full year with him on based on his book, The Success Principles, on how to train people and how to do talks on the success principles. So it's uh, it's been a very fulfilling couple of years working with them. Fantastic. And, you know, the success prin principles is one of my favorite business books and one that I always go back to because I don't think you can read it once. I think you have to read it over and over again to get everything out of it. Definitely. There's 68 principles and you need to you need them at different times in your life. So it's always good to go back to it, mm -hmm. which I think your training. Then the reason I bring this up, I think your training with Jack and your um, experiences as is being an author of empowering children's books that you wrote the I can series. Uh, I think it really leads to all of your um, research that you've done in this talk and all of the information that you share with families and educators. So let's begin talking about your talk. What is the bully in the mirror? Who is the bully in the mirror? Yeah. Yeah. So before we go right into the bully in the mirror, I just want to mention that, well, that the TEDx talk that I did was all about our thoughts and how powerful our thoughts are, right? Our positive thoughts will bring about healthy emotions, whereas our negative thoughts will be tri will trigger negative thinking and negative life. And what I've been finding more and more, what I've been finding out more and more is that our thoughts not only affect us mentally, but they affect us physically, mm -hmm. right? When we have those negative thoughts, it affects our body's hormone balance. It affects the chemicals in our brains which we need to be happy. And it also affects our immune system. So a lot of illnesses come from our negative thinking. Mm -hmm. So the bully in the mirror came to me one day when I heard my own daughter, she was in grade six, she was standing in front of the mirror and she's saying things like, oh, my hair is so frizzy. Why do I have to be so short? Why do I have so many pimples? And of course, I got into the conversation and I, I was, as a mom, I'm telling her all the great things about her, all the wonderful things she does, her kindness, how beautiful she is, you know, all those things. But nothing I said made her feel any better. It wasn't until I went up to her, I grabbed her by the shoulders and I looked into her eyes. I said, you are bullying yourself. Mm -hmm. and finally, she stopped. And it was like she finally got it because I was speaking her language. I mean, our kids have heard so much about bullying at schools and how bad it is. And of course it is. And our kids don't want to be the bully. They don't want to be the bad kid. They don't want to be that person. So the thought for her that she was actually doing this to herself stopped it. Wow. From there, yeah, from there we went on to talk a little bit more about how our thoughts affect us and how this bullying is not a good thing. I mean, the things that we say to ourselves and I'm guilty of it also. Many times I've looked at myself in the mirror and I thought, you know, I'm too short, I'm too fat, whatever it is. We all have those negative thoughts, but that affects us so much. And those things we would never say to somebody else. We wouldn't do that. You know, yeah. we know better, 
But why what is you- what is the old saying? Like we are our hardest critics, right? We are our greatest critics right here. Sure. Now, Miriam, I remember, I'm not sure if you have it out, off the top of your head, but I my mouth dropped open in your TEDx talk with a statistic that you had shared. Do you remember what that statistic was? It was about maybe teenagers these days and the rate of depression and suicide and anxiety. Oh, it's it's so large. I, I don't remember the exact exact okay. statistic, but depression, suicide, I should say, is one of the leading causes of death in the world. I'm in Canada, so the statistics are high. The U.S. is about the same. And it's only second to accidents. Right. Really? Yes. The statistics said it was um, every 40 seconds, one person will die from suicide. That's what it was. Yeah. And when I read that also, I mean, I've been researching every 40 seconds, every 40 seconds, somebody in the world takes their own life. And a lot of that is stems from our negative Mm self-talk, our negative thinking. There are a lot of illnesses associated with it, but a lot of it comes, starts with our minds. So with, uh, with the bully in the mirror, when I was talking to my daughter and later I wrote a story about it with Jack Canfield, I, I, I needed to tell her that how important it was for her to start taking out all these negative thoughts and replacing them with positive ones. And I use the analogy when I go into schools, I use the analogy of our brains being like a garden. We have these buds that come out. Those are our positive thoughts. And these buds just want to flourish. But a lot of times we fill our minds with negative thoughts. And these are all the weeds that keep coming up. And we have to be very careful not to let these weeds take over our minds because those buds will not have a chance to flourish. And those buds are our goals, our intentions, what we do with our lives. So we have to find a way to weed our minds to take all these negative thoughts out. And that's what's that's really difficult to do. But it's doable. I think the first thing is that we have to be aware of them, aware of these weeds, aware of these thoughts. And I have two ways that we can we can take them out. One of them is journaling. So journal, journaling at the end of the day, what your th- bad thoughts have been. And if your child is too young to journal themselves, having a conversation with them, what were you thinking about today? Or when I I saw you through that toy, what were you thinking about? What What were you frustrated about? So say the child can write, you write down what your thought is. For example, for for a child, it could be tomorrow I have a math test and I'm just going to fail like the last time. Okay, so we write that thought, which is the bad thought. And then let's write a true thought. A true thought is what's really happening or how can you change that thought? It could be I have time to ask for help to ask my teacher, ask my mom, I have time to study. So it's just about being aware of your thought and switching it somehow. I love that. Yeah. And then the second way is something that's called the mirror exercise. And this was taught to me by Jack Canfield. Now, before you go into the mirror exercise, I do want to share one example. I'm so sorry. Whenever I, I try to interject on here, it feels like I'm cutting you off, but it's video. So there's a slight lag. Um, so yesterday, a child psychologist was talking about the importance of journaling, how it's a good fit for some people. Mm-hmm. And when um, when I was younger, I journaled like crazy. It was my outlet. Um, but what really hit home for me was after college, I started having a lot of anxiety and mm-hmm. I started having like physical symptoms from my anxiety. From I started having asthma. I started having IBS, irritable bowel. And um I remember it was like I was living on my own, you know, I was a full time teacher and it was a Christmas Eve morning and I was so anxious. I thought I was going to die. Yeah. So I, I but instead of calling 911, for some reason, I called my doctor's office. I don't know. the the <laughs> I was like 22 at the time. So I went into my doctor's office, Dr. Salabini. He's retired for like 10, 15 years now. And he put his hand on my heart and he, you know, listened and all that. And he he took my vitals. And he said, what is wrong? You're anxious. Why are you anxious? What's what's going on? And he sat for 30 minutes and talked to me and I cried and I just unloaded on him. And he was so wonderful. And you know what Dr. Salvini told me? He said, before you go to bed, put a notebook right next to your bed. And he said, dump it. Let all those thoughts, get them in the notebook, 
close the notebook and go to bed. And that started working for me. Mm -hmm. Just getting those negative thoughts, like just releasing them somewhere and closing the book. And so I'll never forget the power that brought into my life. So I'm sorry to interrupt, but I wanted to share the Dr. Salabini story. It's so important, journaling. And for a lot of people that works, right? Journaling. But then there's a lot of people that don't enjoy journaling or that exactly. don't take the time. And you have to find another outlet, whether it be meditation or exercise for or maybe sure. maybe for the mirror exercise. So it's, mirror. I'm handing it back to you. Yeah, you have to find a, something that works for you. But the idea is to release it. Right. To get rid of those negative thoughts. And I and before I, I talk about the mirror exercise, it's normal to have negative thoughts. It's just not OK to let them drive your actions and dictate. Exactly. Exactly. So one of the statistics I found out when I was doing the TEDx talk is that we have 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts a day and 80 percent of these thoughts are negative ones. That's exhausting. It is exhausting. It is exhausting. So we have to find a way to to make that percentage lower, right? To fill our heads with positivity, exactly what you're doing, teaching people how to do that, learning from summits, learning from books, and then passing that on to our kids. So the mirror exercise, it's four steps that you do every night when you go, after you brush your teeth, you're looking at yourself in the mirror in your bathroom, and you do these four things. The first thing is to say your name. So Miriam, right? I, you acknowledge, you're paying attention. The second thing is to appreciate yourself for anything that you did that day, any good things that you did that day. Talk about your accomplishments. Talk about risks you took. Talk about disciplines that you kept that day. And also temptations you resisted. Okay, that's the second step. I'll give you an example in a minute. And the third step is to look into your eyes and to say, I love you. Mm. This part is really tough for a lot of people, but the more you do it, the more you get comfortable with it. And then the fourth step is to just simply take in, take a deep breath and let it in. So I'm, I'll give you an example of that, but I made these little cards that I, I've made for my kids. And when I go into schools, I hand these out and they're on the website. So I've, I've asked my kids to put them in their mirrors, tape it to the mirror. They're all over our house and just to follow it. So for me, it, or for somebody, it could look something like this. You're standing in front of the mirror and you're saying, Miriam, today I want to acknowledge you for getting up early before the alarm went off. I want to appreciate you for going for a walk and making your health a priority. I want to acknowledge you for risks you took. You talked to that new girl at school and that was scary, but you did it. I want to talk about how proud I am that you only ate one cookie at lunch and not three or four, right? So it's just about going through your day. Don't forget to say I love you. Yes, and then right after, look straight into your eyes and to say I love you. And what I said earlier was that that's really, that's probably the most uncomfortable thing for anybody to do because we're not conditioned to do that. Mm -hmm. right? We don't tell ourselves that we love ourselves. So we need to just let that go and do it. And I've heard about a lot of people that actually start crying at this point mm. because it's, I mean, we have to love ourselves first, right? That and is beautiful. Breathe. It's beautiful. And now I, and then you then breathe. Deep breath. That's my last step. Well, I don't want to interrupt, but I do want to tell everyone that we put the link below. So you can actually click on the link below in the comments to get the mirror exercise. And um, I was thinking about my own mirror exercise and uh, while you were talking and thinking, gosh, what would it look like for me, Maria? I want to acknowledge you for putting down your phone this morning and creating six puzzles with Dexter. Oh, wow. Six puzzles with Dexter. You're overwhelmed. You're tired. But you spent time with your son because that's what's important to you. Mm -hmm. I love you. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It was hard, but I did it. <laughs> That's perfect, Maria. I was listening to one of your interviews earlier, and you have a mirror already, a small mirror where you and your family write things in your bathroom. We do. Yeah, well, it's, um, it's, it's a picture frame, so it doesn't reflect. So it's not quite a mirror. But, yes, yeah, so we do write messages, and it's free. I mean, it's just a dry erase message, and those are positive messages to each other. What a great idea. And it, it's about affirming to ourselves all the good, right? 
yeah. and leaving messages for others. I love that idea also. Yeah. Yes. Well, this has been wonderful. And Miriam, wow. I still, I've already heard those statistics, but I'm still blown away. And I love the work that you're doing and just being here today, sharing this with others, the importance of this. And something that we've learned in a lot of our talks this week is that not only do we need to teach our children the importance of loving themselves, but we also need to work on loving ourselves as well. Because I think the more that we work on our own self-appreciation, I think the better parent, wife, daughter, human being that we will be. For sure. For sure. I will also, um, I have an interview right after you, but I will go in in the next um, 10 to 15 minutes and I will uh, add in your TEDx talk too. So if anyone wants to see, I think it was like 17 minutes or something, right? About 15 minutes. Okay, about 15 minutes, because that was awesome as well. Thank you so much, Miriam. Thank you, Maria. It's a privilege to be here. Okay, we'll be in touch soon. Sounds good. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you.